Dear listener, querido Radio Escucha, are you planning to vote in the upcoming midterm elections? We at Futuro want to hear from you. Would you consider leaving us a voice message answering this simple question? What is moving you to vote? Also, tell us which party or candidate you think will better address your concerns. Call us at 646-571-1224. Again, 646-571-1224. Dial us up on a rotary phone. Also, be sure to include your name and contact information in case we want to follow up with you. And thanks a lot. Gracias. Hey guys, just a quick update before we get into the episode. Hours after we recorded this interview with Gustavo Arellano, Nuri Martinez, the disgraced council member, resigned officially from her seat on Wednesday. City Attorney General Rob Bonta, who's the first Filipino-American to hold that position, said he would open an investigation into the Los Angeles redistricting process. He says there's a potential for civil liability based on California civil rights and voting rights laws, and possibly criminal charges, if that's where the facts lead. Please follow Latino Rebels on social media and visit latinorebels.com for the latest news on this story. Now enjoy the episode. From Futuro Media and PRX, this is Latino Rebels Radio. I am your host, Hector Luis Alamo, filling in for Julio Ricardo Varela. If you are like me or any of uh, my fellow Latino people in media, activism, nonprofit, I mean, the Latino me- media, social media has been dominated by this story coming out of Los Angeles since I think it broke Sunday, specifically our guest article in the Los Angeles Times of the story from the Los Angeles City Council. Former President Nuri Martinez caught a year ago with two other members and a uh, local labor leader saying some racist, disparaging remarks about a, uh, a colleague's black son and, uh, you know, Oaxacans in uh, Los Angeles. That's been dominating stuff at Latino Rebels. We've been following it closely, and we are very excited and privileged to be able to bring on our guest, Gustavo Arellano. Gustavo, would you care to introduce yourself to our readers who I'm sure know all about you? Considering I was a former contributor to Latino Rebels, I would hope they know who I am, but my name is Gustavo Arellano. I'm columnist for the Los Angeles Times. I'm also a host of the LA Times podcast, The Times, Essential News from the LA Times, and I'm a voracious listener of Latino Rebels Radio, as I said earlier, a contributor, and just all-around cholo nerd. I think before we start, we should play a clip of exactly what we're talking about here. It's like the oddest thing, it's like black and brown on this float, and then there's this, this white guy with this little black kid who's misbehaved. Este niño has no, he's... They're not doing that. Yeah, no, they're not doing The kid is bouncing off the effing walls on the floor, practically tipping it over. There's nothing you can do to control him. Why is it changuito? And I'm just like, oh my God. They're raising him like a little white kid, which I was like, this kid is a beat down. Like, let me let me take him around the corner and then I'll bring him back. Yeah. Se me entiendes? Ven para acá. It's a pinch. Yeah. But you get six to four, but... So anyway, it's getting back to redistricting. So that's what we're talking about here. I, I didn't hear it on Sunday. I heard it Monday when I'm coming back, trying to gear up for the week. And it was, I would, I'll just say this. Everything that she said was vile, disgusting, right? Uh, it's shocking that not only a council member is talking like this, but the president, the first Latina 
president of the council is talking like this. You can go about everybody said everything uh, have said everything about what she says about Wahawkins and about you know Bonin's black son. Then for me, you know, especially is uh, one thing that strikes me is the fact that she implies that you can't raise a black child like you would a white child. That a black child requires corporal punishment. But Gustavo, please, it's your city. <laughs> you tell you tell us what's going on. It's not even my city. I'm from Orange County, California. L.A. folks, what <laughs> on earth is going on? But no, look, I mean, I I've told this story already, but I'll get into more details now. Like. I was about to get into the shower Sunday morning. I'm like, okay, I'm going to meet for brunch with one of my jefas on the podcast beat. We're going to go get dinner with my wife's uh, uh, sister. And literally, I open the shower, turn on the faucet, and I get a, I check my phone, and there's a Slack message. Hey, Gustavo, can you hear some audio for us? Like, there's some Spanish, and we don't really get it. Like, uh, I'm like, okay, and I heard it. And it was the part where uh, Nuri Martinez calls the black son of Mike Bonin a negrito. Right off the bat, I'm like, oh, God, this is disgusting. Then, but I couldn't understand the context in full, the way, the clip that I got. I just couldn't understand in full, so I asked more for it. Then that's when I heard changuito. I'm like, oh, God. And literally, that was most of my morning. I'd hear more clips and just. She went off against black people. She went off against black children. She went off against Oaxaqueños uh, or, you know, people in this tape. They called their colleagues a little bitch, a diva, essentially that this white man wants to be black. They went off against Armenians. They went off against Jews. They alleged that yeah, a Jewish conspiracy is uh, trying to control South L.A., you expect politicians when they don't know the camera's on to be vulgar, to be just really nasty, because that's what politics is. Democracy is pretty vicious. I'm sorry, you do not expect politicians, especially Latino politicians who have been advocating, saying themselves, we're fighting for communities of color, to basically insult every possible community of color in Los Angeles. It was disgusting. And you're still getting revelations. This is like the freaking Zapruder film. You listen to it again and again. You're like, oh, there's that little crinkly thing. It's actually this. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. And now Los Angeles politics and Latino politics especially have been completely unended. Completely. It's incredible. In the context of this conversation that took place October 2021, she's voicing her frustration over redistricting, right? That once every 10 years, the allocating of districts. I read in, in, in fact, in your column, your most of the column you wrote before today about how, you know, Los Angeles is half Latino, but only a third of the districts are Latino. And so they're talking about, you know, trying to get more Latino districts. And I mean, what are they talking about here? Weakening black districts? Yeah. So every decade, just like in Congress, Los Angeles redistricts its uh, city councils. There's 15 seats. And so it's, br it's brutal. It's brutal. There, I mean, we know there's, there's always fights about what city is going to be in what district. What can you do? And in Los Angeles, it's true. Latino political power is underwhelming. We're half of the city, but just right now, a third of the council seats. Let's see what happens with whether these people resign. So there was a frustration. And there's always going to be jockeying. Always. Again, I have no issue with that. When you're trying to take away black power, though, especially when black political power in Los Angeles has been shrinking because there has been black flight from Los Angeles. I'm sorry, but like when the black community uh, or when you have bigger communities, you're supposed to help the smaller communities. You're not supposed to get more power at their expense. And that's what they were talking about. Now, if they only had talked about that, yeah, people would be upset. That's a conversation to have. If you're going to do that, you do not demean them with Mexican Spanish words that are just, you know, and, and this is what really pisses me off. They're like, oh, well, you know, negrito is not the N word. And like, you know, you say that about kids, changuitos, like they're just monkeying around. And when I'm like, come on, no se hagan, you know, we know exactly what's going on. We know when those words, they can be used in a way that, yes, it's not as horrible as the N word, but it's pretty damn close. And altogether, I mean, yeah, I mean, Negrito, you know, as an Afro-Latino myself, Black Latino, Negrito is not so bad. Uh, you know, describing kids as changuitos, it depends on who you're talking about. But the whole context, the whole is greater than the part, than the sum of its parts, right? And you can tell that there's this anti-Black animosity. One thing we should note about Nuri Martinez is that her, you know, there's new elections in November, but her term is up in 2024. And since she did not technically commit a crime, 
the only way to be removed is by a recall vote, right? I mean, is what's the likelihood of that happening? Her, Kevin DeLeon, and Gil Cedillo, which, by the way, he only has a couple weeks left on his term, so he's kind of a moot point at this point. But the other two, DeLeon and Nuri Martinez, they are never going to live this down. The black community will be calling for their resignation forever. Other good people are going to be calling. The Oaxaqueños. Yeah, that's called Cape Town. That's yes, I see a lot of little short, dark people. Yeah, little Oaxacan, little Oaxacan Koreans. <laughs> Not even like Kevin, little ones. I was like, no, I don't know what you mean, Colorado. Colorado. I was like, I don't know what village they came out and got here, but they're Oaxacan. 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 Yeah, but we got to figure out Mark C, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that benefits you three. You want to piss off a group, do not piss off the Oaxaqueños. They are legends in community organizing. They have been dealing with anti-indigeneity in Mexico and then among Chicano communities in L.A. for way too long. I think this is actually an underreported story with the Oaxaqueños because there has been a Oaxaqueño politicians elected more in the Central Valley, another big thing. But in Los Angeles, you know, they really haven't had that just yet, but I guarantee you, you're going to see the first Oaxaqueño council member come from this whole fiasco. So to remove any of these people, recalls cost millions of dollars. You have to gather a bunch of signatures. It could be done. I think it will. It could happen, but they're going to resign because the entire Democratic political establishment is against them. They're calling for their resignation. U.S. Senator Alex Padilla, who was a mentor to Nuri Martinez, I think she used to work under him. President Joe Biden, he's in Southern California this week. He's already said through a press secretary, they need to get down. You know he's going to say this has no place. And not only that, if you think about it, when the Republicans have been making their inroads with Latinos, I, you know, sometimes I, for me, it's like it's overblown. But at the same thing, it's something that you need to track. And now you have Latinos being anti-black and all this. You don't think I'm actually surprised that the Republican Party hasn't hopped on this. See, 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 Democrats are racist. Latinos, you're not racist reject the Democratic Party. This is just, I'll say it, a cluster, beep, a clusterfuck, a complete clusterfuck. <laughs> oh my God. It, and again, I just can't, and what's remarkable to me is that the level of disgust, just flat out disgust. Again, there's some pendejos who are saying, oh, you know, making apologies, but Latinos especially, we, because we know these people. We know these people. There are tios, there are primas, there are like, you know, that side of the family who, when they used to say it, we would roll our eyes. Now the younger generation flat out calls them. You can't say that. We're disgusted. We're absolutely disgusted. And then now we have to deal with the fallout. It's fallout that we're going to have to deal with for years. I mean, it, as, again, as a black Latino, I, I don't mean to you know, harp on this, but as a black Latino, I mean, when I heard what she said, and I've said this on Twitter and other places, it's not that shocking as a black Latino. I've heard worse to my face. It's kind of like when uh, all these videos of police violence started coming out, black people we're saying, we were, we've been telling you that this has yes, been existing. Yes, ah. And as a black Latino, you know, I've, I, we've been telling you that there is this anti-blackness, not, you know, not only anti-blackness, but colorism, right? Because the Oaxacan thing, it, it touches on colorism. It, like you said, anti-indigeneity, uh, like, you know, they're talking about, oh, now they're wearing shoes and this whole thing. I mean, it's just disgusting. And the fact that she was, you know, she was a member of the LA uh, Unified District, uh, School District. I mean, this person... Racists have no place in governing, right? I mean, it, it is, if you're that stupid to be racist, I mean, you can't be making decisions about how to run a country, how to run a city, how to run a county, how to run a school district, right? Well, we had a president who was pretty racist, so the, <laughs> this, this porqueria happens. But no, I mean, yes, Nuri Martinez was president of the LA Unified School District. So all these constituents oh, wow. all across Los Angeles County, she was head of these kids. I mean, the Oaxacan part, look, the anti blackness. And also, let's not forget, she was suggesting that a black child should be taken around the corner and beaten to act well, which is, again, corporal punishment. It's like, it's horrible, horrible. But the Oaxaqueño part, like, okay, if you're going to say, oh, yeah, we're with La Raza, we're uh, advocating for Latinos, well, now you get this group where she's like, oh, yeah, they're short and dark. And, or, you know, the people are saying, I can't remember the exact conversation, but they're like, oh, yeah, they're short and dark. And, yeah, now they're wearing shoes. I don't even know what village they're from. And then the one part that especially made me gasp. Remember, this is Sunday morning. I have clothes on now. Like, I had to put it on, but I'm listening to it. And we, like, the audio wasn't the best, but I'm, like, doing like this. I'm just pushing my ear, uh, my earphones as much into my ears as possible. And then I heard it. 
talking about what happens. Dan fails. And she, no, more like Dan fails. Like she emphasized on the fails that they're ugly. And, you know, there's controversy about whether she said so ugly, Dan, Dan fails. I personally think as she was saying Estan fails and she just clipped the time. Like you say, the Stan or Tan or whatever. But the fails part. She... I'm Puerto Rican, so that happens all the time. <laughs> exactly. You know how it is. <laughs> but when you heard the emphasis on the fails, it's like, oh, you can't just make fun of them for their skin tone. You can't just make fun of them for their uh, short stature because, you know, they're indigenous folks. And these are stereotypes, of course, that have existed in Mexico and the U.S. for decades, if not centuries. You also have to say they're ugly. That was just disgusting. I uh, like it. It's vile. It, it is just vileness at its most vile. And ugly. I mean, fail. I mean, it has the same connotations in English, but in Spanish, fail mean you know it has connotations of being evil, of being you know not human. You know, yes, substandard. It just has all this. It's harsher. It's harsher than just ugly. Yeah, it's just like that's a word that you use when you're truly disgusted by something. Ugh. I think they ended up having a meeting yesterday at City Hall of the council and all these people coming up. I mean, you see the, you know, that the the one lady who comes up and says, you know, F this, F Nuri, F everybody, F this, this is legitimate. I mean, people were really angry and it looked like there was, you know, there was about to be a riot. I mean, what is the sense in L.A.? I mean, I think what everybody wants to know who's not from L.A., what is the sense in L.A. right now? I do think they're overstating how much, oh, there's racial tension. Like, it goes with an election where crime and homelessness are very much at the top of the agenda, especially with the mayoral race between Congresswoman Karen Bass and billionaire developer Rick Caruso. So you hear people say, like, oh, it's worse. I'm like, no, 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 no. We are not in 1991. Let's not even pretend we're in 1991 where there was real tension. There's always going to be tension. There's always going to be tension. That's just how it is, sadly, in humanity. Again, though, I place my faith on the younger generation, people who call themselves Latinx, frankly, the people who are trying to really work on anti-racism, the people who are who pushed us, the older Latinos, to say Black Lives Matter at a time where we're like, well, do all lives matter or whatnot? No, they're the ones who are pushing it. So I have faith in them. But again, there are people who have been working on this very issue for decades. Karen Bass was one of the founders of this legendary group called Community Coalition that was created in the wake of the L.A. riots to specifically work with black and brown communities or black and Latino communities. And of course, there's Afro Latinos and all that stuff, but, you know, all those folks and unite them. And so they've created a generation of young people who get that. So it's not like the city's ready to explode. Honestly, if I want to say what the sentiment is, the city is disgusted. We knew there was racism. Of course, there's racism, but it's like a sucker punch to all of us collectively. And we're like, well, what are we going to do next? What's next? I mean, and so what I'm trying to tell people is like, yes, be angry. Please be angry. We should all be angry, disgusted, but we have to go to what's next. We can't let that anger fester because that's when 92 happens. That's when all this bad stuff happens. And you brought this up, and I think we should touch on it. I mean, this this probably could have not have come at a worse time for Democrats (laughs) a few weeks from Election Day. You know, Nuri Martinez, first Latina, Democrat, president of the council. So, you know, people who voted for her probably thought they were electing somebody who represents them and is this is okay this is progress this is a future i know a lot of latinos are going to be thinking well look damned if you do damned if you don't i mean here we voted for a latina democrat and she ended up being just as bad as the republicans i mean what do you, what is your sense that you know this is gonna have an effect on the midterms oh geez i mean look this sets back latino political power for years and as i wrote in my column for the la times How long, and I'm going to talk specifically about Mexican-Americans, because that's what Nuri Martinez is. How long have Mexican-Americans, or, and and, you know what, I'll I'll also include all Latinos, you know, especially Central Americans, because Kevin De Leon, he's a Guatemalteco. How long have we had to deal with the right saying Latinos are going to take over? When it's Mexicans, they call it Reconquista in the American Southwest. Now you have the bullshit of the Great Replacement Theory. Uh, with Central Americans, oh, these caravans, they're going to overwhelm us. Like, and now, now, of course, Venezolanos are part of that, like, where they're getting shipped off to uh, Cape Cod and all of that. And we, as Latinos, we know, no, yes, we are the demographics. We're now the largest minority in the United States. In California, we're a plurality of the population. In Los Angeles, we're a majority of the population. In L.A. County as well. And now you have these Latino politicians saying, yeah, the Jews control South L.A. They're working in tandem with the blacks. We got to get rid of their power. 
it got so bad that Nuri said of George Gascon, Cubano, you know, born in Cuba, fuck him, he's with the blacks. Oh my God, like that's, it's like for a lot of people, they're gonna say, see, I can see the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world. See, 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 we told you so. We cannot trust these people. All the gains that Latino politicians have done of saying we're going to govern for everyone, just ripped apart, shredded. We, I, I mean, we're only a couple of days away from the release. We still don't know what the ramifications are. An election's coming. A ver qué va a pasar. And, you know, the, the fact that Ron Herrera, president of the L.A. County Federation of Labor, is in there. I mean, there's growing, you know, support for unions, but there's also this long-held distrust of unions, right? Oh, yeah. So this meeting happened at the offices of the L.A. County Labor Federation, which is a very powerful, very influential group of basically all the unions in Los Angeles. All those dues go get spent on political candidates. And the right has been saying forever, they have way too much power. And this shows it. And it's, it's interesting because the genesis of the audio, so it was recorded in October of last year, as you mentioned earlier, but it was only released last month. Apparently it got- And nobody knows who recorded no, it, right? No, nobody no. knows who- Yeah, so it, it got posted on Reddit and then it got taken down, but the LA Times was able to obtain a copy of it. We broke the story. And there's this cryptic message. I haven't read it myself. I'm going off of what my colleagues have reported, but it said something to the effect of, you hear about all the, you know, the, just how bad politics is. And then when you hear it, when you actually hear the audio, it's just horrible. This is what labor has done. So the theory now is that it was someone in the labor movement who got this affected with labor secretly recorded because it's a secret conversation. In California, you cannot record someone without their consent. So and that's exactly what happened. And then just released it to, I think it was to embarrass labor. Because they wanted to show, like, this is political happening. Because you hear Ron Herrera saying, like, okay, we got to get this person in. We got to get that person in. It's like, you know, the, the Chicago of Richard Daly, you know, you, you, you are the fucking Pria Mexico, el dedazo, like you and you and you. I think all the racism, I'm sure this person knew about it, but it was almost after the fact. They wanted to show union power. So, yeah, now unions are going to have to answer to this as well. And to their credit, a lot of unions immediately said no. And also, again, you want to talk about the toxicity of all this. There's also, Insults against SEIU, the Service Employees I International Union, which is the legendary justice for janitors, which is now almost overwhelmingly uh, Mexicano and Central American, very woman driven. And they're getting insulted as well. God, the toxicity. Again, all you could do is feel disgusted. Yeah, I think the video was posted to Reddit with the message, uh, labor is in bed with City Hall, right? That's what it is. And okay, kudos yeah. to the LA Times, because I, I read that, you know, the, a spokeswoman for the Federation of Labor said that that's a, you know, that's a private conversation on Federation of Labor property. You have no right to. And, and the Times of General Counsel <laughs> said, no, well, we we have the right to publish anything that's newsworthy. I mean, that was their response to what was on that tape. That was horrible. And, and now the labor labor fed leadership is getting hell from their own members for that. It's like, come on. OK, yes, it was illegally recorded. But hello, we're the press. First Amendment. We have uh, we are protected by the First Amendment and especially in California with shield laws and all that to be able to report on this stuff. But that's your first reaction instead of saying our heart goes to this black child who was called an animal and who was advocated to get beaten down. We are disgusted by all this. No, it's like protecting yourself. It was such a dark moment for labor as well. Like at no one, there is no, I mean, the only silver lining again is that I hope it just snaps everyone into attention and makes us realize we cannot let this happen again. We need to elect people who are truly anti-racist. And we, and you know, this is me as a reporter. You can never take politicians as their word. This is why I don't worship. I've never worshiped politicians. There's some who I think are cooler than others. There's some who I think are smarter than others. Yes. But in terms of like, hey, buddy, 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 nah, 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 nah. You cannot do that. Even us Latinos, we do have to elect people who best serve everyone's interests, but especially will be an advocate for us. But we can't elect people anymore just because they're Latinos. I learned that lesson a long time ago, but that's another story. Yeah, I mean, I learned that in 08. But um, yeah, <laughs> you know, the, the famous adage, you know, only one way for a journalist to look at a politician, that's down. But uh, <laughs> that's a good one. So with all these calls, Biden, you know, Mayor Garcetti, Governor Newsom, everybody, everybody in the whole world, you know, you're going to hear the Pope calling on these people to resign. You know, there's no chance that Nuri Martinez and De Leon, I mean, like you said, Cedillo's, he's on his way out, but there's no way they stay on the council, right? 
Oh, gosh. If they do, that's a testament to their arrogance and their ignorance. They will not be left to have a peaceful moment in their life until they sit down. They are going to be followed by protesters. And, you know, not we're not talking about violence. No one is even thinking of that, nor should they, because that's absolutely disgusting, especially in this context. But protests outside, I mean, they went to Nuri Martinez's house. And Nuri Martinez, by the way, the same person, it's not just a, like, She's racist and all this. She was also the person who was trying to pass a law that banned people from protesting outside politicians' house within, like, I think 500 feet or whatever. Like, she also hates the First Amendment. Like, no, exactly. Es una, you know, es una de ellas, like that. So I thought they were going to resign before the city council meeting. Instead, Nuri Martinez took a leave of absence. She's going to do it soon. Kevin, that's an interesting one because Kevin technically is more politically powerful than Nuri. He was a first Senate pro tem leader in over 100 years. He unsuccessfully ran a couple of years ago. Uh, there was actually an episode in Latino USA to uh, plug uh, Futuro Media uh, entities about him running against Dianne Feinstein for the U.S. Senate seat. He lost. He was a mayoral candidate this year. He came in third place. He has more at stake. I don't know what's going to happen with him. His political career is over after this, but how much longer is he going to extend it? That remains a question, especially because their own confidants are saying, Step down. Antonio Villaraigosa, the former mayor of Los Angeles, he appeared at a press conference. Uh, was it a conference? More like a seminar that Karen Bass held with over 30 community leaders. He was, I think, either, I don't think he was right next to Karen, but like literally two seats away from him. Toño and Gil Cedillo grew up together. I don't know if he said that specifically, but um, come on, it's implicit. It's like, step down. This is an embarrassment. And if you really care about Latinos, there's so much damage control to be done. You folks staying on council does not help it. Well, Gustavo, it's a pleasure to meet you. Big fan of your work. It's great to have you come on and talk to us about this. Let everybody know where they can find you and your work. Yeah, just uh, you know, go to latimes.com to read all the coverage that we have. It's not just me. It's so many colleagues, Ben Oreskes, Dakota Smith, Julia Wick, David Zanziner, and now all the folks are coming out to be part of this story. But you can find me on Twitter, just at Gustavo Arellano. And if you like all of this stuff and you just can't catch up to everything that I do, uh, subscribe to my weekly newsletter. Go to GustavoArellano.org. I send it out every Saturday morning. I give you a song of the week, a quote of the week, a podcast of the week, an article of the week, all that stuff. Obviously, when this comes out, you'll be able to hear as well. So thank you all, Latino Rebel Radios. Rifa. Maybe we can't uh, have too much confidence in politicians, but thank God we have reporters like you, you know, shining a light on this stuff. So thank you, Gustavo. Peace. No, gracias a ustedes. Peace. I want to thank Gustavo Arriano for coming on. Very interesting. I mean, we, will we be following this at Latino Rebels? And, you know, in Futuro generally, uh, we've been talking about it. But again, I want to thank Gustavo Ariano from the LA Times for coming on. I'm Hector Alamo. You can follow me across all platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, at Hector Luis Alamo. Be sure to visit latinorebels.com. We'll be covering this story as well as the you know, recovery efforts in Puerto Rico. Shout out to Carlos in Puerto Rico. Latino Rebels Radio, as you know, is brought to you by Futuro Media and PRX. Shout out to our great producer, Oscar Fernandez, our editorial director, Fernanda Santos. Thank you, Julio, Jay, as I call him, for letting me sit in your chair for a second week in a row. You know, I'm getting comfortable, getting better. Um, but uh, thank you guys for listening. I'll catch you later. Peace. <laughs>
expressed by the guests and contributors in this podcast are their own and do not necessarily reflect the views of Futuro Media or its employees.